Tammy Winnett was born May 5, 1942 and died April 6, 1998. She was an American country music singer-songwriter and one of country music's best-known artists and biggest-selling female singers. Winnett was called the first lady of country music, and her best-known song, Stand By Your Man, is one of the best-selling hit singles by a woman in the history of country music. Many of her hits dealt with classic themes of loneliness, divorce, and the difficulties of life and relationships. During the late 1960s and early 1970s, Winnett charted 20 number one songs on the Billboard Country Chart. Along with Loretta Lynn, Lynn Anderson, and Dolly Parton, she is credited with having defined the role of women in country music during the 1970s. Wynette's marriage to country music singer George Jones in 1969 created a country music couple following the earlier success of Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash. Though they divorced in 1975, the couple recorded a sequence of albums and singles together that hit the charts throughout the 1970s and early 1980s. Tammy and George, so nice to see you both. Thank well, you. thank you, Frank. We're happy to be here with you. George, you know, as the old adage goes, I know this is kind of a family affair, so to speak, <laughs> but as the old adage goes, we'll let the uh, ladies go first. Is All that right. okay That's with fine you? fine with me. And I just like to sort of do for a little... For the first time. For the first time, <laughs> I see. I just like to sort of do a little recap on the Tammy Winnett saga, which uh, I know there's one thing that Tammy told me that people often get confused, and that's the fact that everybody says, well, Tammy, we know you're from Alabama. And I think Tammy probably has explained one million times that, well, actually, no. How'd that come to happen, Tammy? Well, Frank, it's an odd situation. I was born in the state of Mississippi, Etiwamba County, Mississippi, but our land joined the Alabama line, so the nearest town to us was Red Bay, Alabama. So I guess I have to claim both states. Well, I know at the time when you were a youngster growing up there that your interest in country music also was very big. Even before you started singing, I think that you told me that the main interest really was listening to the radio. Right, I think I got to start to school when I was five years old, which they passed the law that year that you had to be six, so I had to stay in the first grade two years, but I started strictly because I loved to sing so much, and I would go down to all the plays and the programs that they'd put on and play the pianos, and the teachers asked my mother if I could start early, so I did, but didn't gain anything by it. You know, quite often we wonder where the musical talent begins with an artist such as yourself. And I think that uh, from what we had discussed that you would say primarily that your real start in the musical business and singing came from some thoughts that your father had. Yes, my father died when I was eight months old, but uh, he played almost any instrument that he picked up and he left behind at the time of his death a string of instruments. He left, I think, five or six, including the piano that he had asked my mother to buy uh, prior to his death. Just before he died, he went totally blind, but he'd sit at the piano and place my fingers on the keys and this was a wish of his that that I would learn to play and I guess that something I heard as a child so much that I and it was probably born in me I just loved it well I know his wish was well fulfilled Tammy with the success that you have had I'd like to turn to the other side of the Jones family here for a moment and George I know that uh, you came a little further south than Alabama or Mississippi just, just a little bit down far. Texas way well actually I was uh I brought up mostly uh, around Beaumont, Texas, which was probably 120,000 people. But I was born about 40 miles from Beaumont in a little town, Oilfield Town. There was a big boom back in the early 1900 uh, called Saratoga, Texas. And the population, oh, probably now around three or 400 people, I guess. But uh, that was where I was born. Of course, I moved around uh, 10 or 11 years old to Beaumont and uh, pretty well made that home ever since. George, what really would you say was your indoctrination or beginning of interest in country music? How would you say yours started, your interest? Well, uh, I guess all families where there's a, a musician or an entertainer, uh, it's almost uh, inherited in a way. Um, my mother played uh, 
the piano and organ in church uh, years ago, and and my dad played the guitar just a little bit and blowed the harmonica, and uh, I, that's all I heard uh, ever since I was big enough to remember is uh, singing a country song that my dad always wanted me to sing, and I had a sister that sang with me at the time, and we sang. Uh, duets together, but uh, I remember uh, back uh, on Saturday nights uh, on the old radio, we'd always tune in the Grand Ole Opry, and, and my favorites back then were Roy Acuff and Bill Monroe, and I begged my mama, I said, no, I'll probably go to sleep, make sure you wake me up when they come on, and uh, I don't know, just as far back as I can remember, I guess it's sort of barned in you and around you, you know. Right. You know, I had the... Uh great pleasure of a year or so ago to uh, act as a master of ceremonies at the CMA banquet show in which both you and Tammy appeared uh, individually and then of course in a duet and I think that the introduction that was written for you probably in my mind has to be one of the greatest because it said that you were considered one of the greatest country singers of all time and really I, I must admit that uh, I've been a great fan of yours for a number of years. Well thank you Frank and that sure makes me feel good to hear that. So have I. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could live up to that and I hope I do. Well George with the string of hits you've had uh, I don't think there could be any disputing it. Right now I'd like to just pause for a moment since we have you both here and since you've joined Tammy on the epic label We've been uh, very excited, of course, possibilities that you and Tammy recording duets, and this has come to pass. Tammy, I know that your career started with a lot of successful October months, and I know that many exciting things happened to you in the month of October. And I think, of course, one of the first ones was that when you came to Nashville and made your first recording, I believe that was in an October month. It was, Frank, but the year before that, I came to the convention in Nashville in October, which was the first October of the, of the string of Octobers, I was working with some DJs in Birmingham, Alabama, and I came up with uh, the men and their wives to the convention. This was the first time I had ever been to Nashville. Then the following October, I had my first record out, which was apartment number nine. Then the following October, I got a Grammy on I Don't Wanna Play House. Then the next three years, I got female vocalist of the year in October, and then in the same year, I had a baby girl born in October, October 5th, so it's been a it's been a good uh, string of Octobers. And Tam with Georgette. I start watching them on <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I keep that. Uh, that's a special month. Tam with Georgette, the young lady you, you just mentioned, is wandering around outside the studio here, and I wish everyone could see her. She's just beautiful. Well, thank you. We're awfully proud of her. George, we followed Tammy's spectacular series of Octobers, and we know where that brought Tammy to and brought her to stardom. What about the George Jones story on the way up? Well, there's uh, a little difference there. Uh, I, I started off, like I say, I was living in Beaumont, Texas, and the uh, record label that was formed in Beaumont, back when uh, you might remember Arlie Duff, he had he wrote a right. song and recorded Y'all Come, right? which uh, Bing Crosby made a fabulous recording out of and sold quite a few records. And uh, I served a short uh, term in the uh, Marine Corps for about two years. And uh, when I was discharged in uh, November of 53, uh, I started playing uh, some of the local clubs and uh, the people that formed the new company. They were looking for talent and uh, they got in touch with me and offered me a contract, and uh, which I took. I just flew off for it. You know, I was really enthused and happy about it. And uh, it went from there to two or three other labels, and and uh, eventually I always wanted to be on a major label, and and it just took me about 17 years to to get to that label, and I finally got to Epic. I'd like to take a moment, and I think this perhaps is indicative of why the George Jones success story has come to be. George Jones and a picture of me without you from the Epic album of the same name. George and Tammy, it is a delight that we now have both of you on Epic Records. And Tammy, speaking of your success, again, I'd like to refer back to the Country Music Association show that I mentioned earlier, on which both you and George appeared. And I recall that our writer, Bob Tubert, wrote in part for your introduction that evening, here is lovely Miss Tammy Wynette, whose voice has become the voice of every heartbreak woman has ever known. <laughs> and... Do you feel that way? Do you feel that the songs that you sing do depict really in true life what women do experience? I think so, and I think uh, the people that have bought my records and have been so nice to me by buying them 
are the women that most of them stay home and the everyday problems of life, divorce, and the working woman also. They like to hear this in a song. It just means a lot to them. It means what women want to hear and things right. that concern them most in life, perhaps. Right. George and Tammy, I'd like to thank you both for coming by our epic studio. It's been a delight to see you. I would like to also say thank you to two wonderful people, to two great entertainers. May your happiness continue. Thank, thank you very you much, Frank. Frank. Thank you, Tammy Wynette and George Jones. Tammy Wynette was born Virginia Wynette Pugh near Tremont, Mississippi, the only child of Mildred Fay, née Russell, September 3, 1921 to June 24, 1991, and William Hollis Pugh, June 2, 1916 to February 13, 1943. Wynette's father was a farmer and local musician who died due to a brain tumor when Wynette was nine months old. Her mother worked in an office as a substitute school teacher and on the family farm. At Pugh's death, Mildred left her daughter in the care of her parents, Thomas and Flora Russell, and moved to Memphis, Tennessee, to work in a defense plant during World War II. In 1946, Mildred married Boy Lee, a farmer. The Russell home had no indoor toilets or running water. Wynette was raised with an aunt, Carolyn Russell, who was only five years older, more like a sister than an aunt. As a girl, Wynette taught herself to play a variety of musical instruments left behind by her father. Wynette attended Bellflower High School. A month before graduation, several months before her 18th birthday, she wed her first husband, Yupel Bird. He was a construction worker, but had trouble keeping a job, and they moved several times. Wynette worked as a waitress, a receptionist, and a barmaid, and also in a shoe factory. In 1963, she attended Beauty College in Tupelo, Mississippi, where she learned to be a hairdresser. She continued to renew her cosmetology license every year for the rest of her life. Just in case she ever had to go back to a daily job, she left Yupel before the birth of their third daughter, who developed spinal meningitis. Wynette tried to earn extra money by performing at night. Yupel did not support her ambition to become a country singer, and according to Wynette, as she drove away he told her, dream on, baby. Years later, he appeared at one of her concerts as she was signing autographs and asked for one. She signed it, dream on, baby. Tammy Wynette is considered by numerous music critics from All Music and Rolling Stone to be one of the greatest and most influential singers in country music history. Many other country singers have been influenced by Wynette, including Reba McIntyre, Sarah Evans, Faith Hill, and Lee Ann Womack. In 1998, following Wynette's death, she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, one of the highest honors of her career. A special CD collection titled Tammy Wynette, Collector's Edition was released in 1998, that included Wynette's signature, Stand By Your Man, which even charted outside the top 40 on the country charts that year. Wynette's signature song, Stand By Your Man, has been covered by both men and women alike. Fellow country singers, including Lynn Anderson, Dottie West, Loretta Lynn, Elton John and Lyle Lovett have covered the song, as well as rock bands, including Me First and the Gimme Gimmies, Lemmy of Motorhead with Wendy O. Williams of the Plasmatics, Martina McBride covered Wynette's 1976, Till I Can Make It On My Own, for her 2005, Timeless album, which was a cover album of country music standards. It was covered comedically in the 1980 film, The Blues Brothers. 
Stand By Your Man, placed at number 48 on RIAA's 1997 list of songs of the century, which consisted of the 300 of their considered to be greatest and best known songs of the 20th century. The musical Stand By Your Man, The Tammy Winnett Story, which premiered at the Ryman Auditorium in 2001 and later toured, is a biographical treatment of Wynette's life and music, and features several songs recorded by Winnett and or George Jones. In 2002, she was ranked number two on CMT's 40 Greatest Women of Country Music. Patsy Cline was ranked number one, one of Wynette's biggest inspirations, and at number three was fellow country star, Loretta Lynn. Wynette's former husband, George Jones was ranked number three on CMT Special 40 Greatest Men of Country Music in 2003. In 2003, a survey of country music writers, producers and stars listed Stand By Your Man as the top country song of all time. Country Music Television broadcast a special for the top 100 songs, with the number one song performed by Martina McBride, Judson Baptist Church, which neighbors Wynette's house, purchased the house and land, which belonged to Hank Williams before he died, for a little over a million dollars. The Winnet House is used as a youth center as well as a guest house. In April 2008, the CD Stand By Your Man, The Best of Tammy Winnet, released by Sony BMG to mark the 10th anniversary of her death, entered the UK official album chart at number 23. In April 2011, Wynette's 1968 original recording of Stand By Your Man was selected by the US Library of Congress to be preserved as one of that year's 25 recordings chosen for their cultural significance. In 20 
2010, the Germany-based independent record label Bear Family Records released a box set by George Jones, which showcased his recordings for Musicore and included the earliest duets with Winnet. A group of friends and volunteers are currently planning a Tammy Winnet Museum in Tremont, Mississippi. The state of Mississippi will provide part of the funding. There are also efforts to produce a Tammy Winnet stamp through the U.S. Postal Service. That's our guest, the first lady of country music, celebrating 25 years in show business, Tammy Wynette is here. Nice to have you here, Tammy. Oh, it's good to be here. It's been a while. It has been a while. You look really terrific. Well, thank you. You look Thanks. just great. Oh, you made my day, Dan. Thanks. Are you feeling good? <laughs> Everything okay? I feel great. Your health is okay. Wonderful. Health is wonderful, finally. And uh, I, I feel great. Um, it's, it's the best time, you know, I think of my life. Uh, I'm happy with where I am in my career. Good. I'm happy with where I am in, in my home life. Uh, I have, of course, my children are all grown now. Yep. I have grandchildren. And I'm just, uh, I'm just really at ease with who I am and where I am. Good. You know, you know, those of us who've known you for a lot of years, we worry about your health sometimes. Because I know. You've, you've had some experiences. In fact, in 1990 in People magazine, they said you'd had 17 major surgeries. Now, that's a lot. You know, well, they we missed it by a little bit. I've had 22. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, tell me this. Now, what, what, do you, what do you attribute that to? Does this stress, and I know you've had a lot of stress in your life. Does, does that contribute to this, or is, are you just helps. prone to health, to, to health problems? No, uh, stress helps to bring it on, but my biggest problem has been adhesions, which is scar tissue. Uh, some people form uh, adhesion, scar tissue, others don't. But I had my first operation when Georgette was 10 days old in 1970. And from that, I grew scar tissue and adhesions. And if your scar is like, say this, it grows down like this. It'll hit an intestine and another intestine, another intestine, uh -huh. and then you've got problems. They have to be cut off. But the worst part about that is they grow back in less than six weeks. Mm. So you have, uh, you know, you gotta face, hey, I gotta have them cut out again when it gets, to where I can't handle it. And so you can feel it coming on. Oh, when you, when you... you know it. You know immediately when it's coming on, and um, there's, you know, you stand it until you just can't stand it anymore, and then you give up and say, hey, do it again. You know, it has to be done. But then I, I've also had, you know, appendectomy, gallbladder, yeah. and, and normal things like that. Yeah, I had an appendectomy a couple of years back. That's that's not a pleasant thing. Is no, it? it's not. No stomach surgery is pleasant because every time I don't, I didn't realize this until I had had so many. But every time you sneeze, you cough, you talk, you laugh, it hurts your stomach after you've that's had right. surgery. You know. That's right. And I had Nara Wilson and Richie and some guy and some of the guys from the business come up to see me after I had surgery oh. one time. They'll and, kill you. Oh, they were. I finally said, guys, you got to leave. I can't handle this. <laughs> I said, it's hurting, and I was holding a pillow to my stomach, you know, and trying to go, ah, oh. ah, 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 but it, yeah. it just wasn't working. It's you know? awful. But you're okay now. Your health is, is, is good now, better my than it's been. My health is good. It's the best it's been in 20 years. So I feel great. Good. I'm happy uh, for you. I'm very happy. Now, get us straight on this name thing. We, Mike and I were talking about it. Is it <laughs> Wynette or Wynette? Because well, I've heard both. It, it's really Wynette. But it, it's been called Wynette for many, many, many years. And I think because they thought it was a last name and my real last name. But it, uh, it, that's not true, it's a middle name. 
and uh, I don't care as long as they call it. Just as long as they call your name doesn't matter. <laughs> no, uh, I don't care if it's Wynette, Wynette, uh, and I've stopped saying anything about it. I just don't say anything to anybody who says Wynette because, hey, it's been that way for so many years till it doesn't matter. The real name you were, that you were given is Virginia? Is it, is Virginia it? Wynette Pugh. Hmm. Now, did I ever go through harassment in, in, in school with Pew. Pew! Pew! Kids can be cruel oh, when they find a name. They are so yeah. cruel, you know. <laughs> and it's spelled P-U-G-H. My, my grandmother was a full-blood Cherokee Indian. So I have a lot of uh, Indian blood in me. Does anybody still call you Virginia, or is that name gone? No, that name's gone, but uh, a lot of people call me Wynette. Uh, my mom called me Wynette. I lost my mom uh, a little over... Uh, well, about a year and a half ago. But any time I hear in a crowd, Wynette, hey, Wynette, I, I say, I gotta go. That's somebody I went to school with or somebody that I know or are a member of the family. Because nobody calls me that. And my mom, she used to catch me in a crowd of like, I don't care if it was 2,000 signing autographs. Wynette, come here. Come here, Wynette. Yeah. There's somebody I want you to see, you know. So, so you never went by Virginia. It was, it was, no, it was no, it was, it was, it uh, was, it was Wynette. Now, uh, when I moved to Memphis, when I moved away from the farm, which didn't last very long, there's a funny story about that. Uh, my mother and my stepfather were gonna move to Memphis. And I thought, oh God, here's my chance to get out of this dreary place, out away from this farm, you know. So I said, I'm going, because we had all lived in the same house with my grandparents, all of us together, and my aunt. And my aunt was raised like my sister. And I've, I've lost them all. I lost her when she was like 40. And uh, I thought, I'll go. So I went and I was doing okay, but my grandfather sent me a card. And the only thing it said in it, it says, Hi, Net. He called me Net. Hi, Net. Uh, Margaret, uh, no, Shirley Anderson got your basketball suit. That drove me wild. I thought, <laughs> she came. She cannot have my basketball suit. I'm going back. So I went back within two weeks back to my grandfather's house to get my, to reclaim my basket, basketball suit, which was different from everybody else's. Daddy wouldn't let me wear shorts. I had to, I had to wear the jersey and blue jeans, denims, you know. This is and in I, high school? Uh, high school, uh, well, no. It was in eighth and ninth grade. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, that's high school, ninth grade is. Uh, I kept taking them home, kept taking them home. Finally, I took them home and I said, Daddy, look at them one more time, the short pants. I said, please, everybody else wears, wears the shorts. I'm, I'm different. And he said, okay, put them on. I put them on and he said, walk around me. I did and I twirled and I twirled and I walked around him. And he said, my grandmother's name was Flora, but he called her Floor. Floor, come here. And I thought, Oh God, what does this mean, you know? So mama walked in, I call them mama and daddy. And mama walked in, he says, put elastic in the legs of these pants. I said, daddy, I'll still be different, you know? So I was, I was the only one, but he said, I can see up the legs of them britches and I ain't having that, put elastic in them legs. So God, you know. But you did get to wear them ultimately. I did get to wear them, but they were different. With some elastic. So. Were you a pretty good basketball player? Oh, I won all state uh, really? in the state of Mississippi two years in a row, yeah. yeah. Now, was I that loved back, basketball. Was that back when the women played either offense half or court. defense? Played yes, half court. Yes, played half court, yes. Yeah. Uh, I Which end were you I don't on? understand. Uh, I, I was a forward. Oh, yeah? And I can't understand the rules now. I look, you know, they have the three-point shots and all this, and I try to keep up with it, but it is so different. Well, now it's the same thing as men's basketball. Now they oh, play full is. court. Oh, it is. I don't know if I could handle that or not. I don't know if I could run back and forth it's... so much because I think you run more in basketball and exert more energy oh, yeah, yeah. than in any other sports, even football. Yeah, you run at least five miles a game, I think they used to tell us. But, uh, and, and we didn't have to wear elastic on our, on our pants either. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Now, now, Tammy, this uh, after 25 years in the business, you've had 53 albums, if I'm correct on that. Mm -hmm. Number 54, now, I don't know if this is out or not, or about to come out, with Dolly Parton and Loretta Lynn. You've done an album with them. Yeah. What's that been like? Yeah, I have. It's been wonderful. It's all done. We have had so much fun. No, I go in the 30th and uh, finish my part of it. Uh, we all went in together and did as much as we could together. Then uh, we had harmony parts. You know, uh, somebody sang lead, somebody sang high, and somebody sang low. 
And of course, me having the lowest voice with Loretta and Dolly, I had got stuck with all the low parts. So I had more to do than some of them, than uh, Dolly and Loretta did on some of the things. So I still have to go in and do a few things. Uh, I think it's maybe five songs I've got to put just like, you know, one voice on yeah. like a, a bridge or something. It's not like doing the whole song, so. Now, I read where you and, and, and Dolly had written some songs. For this, we, were they for this album? They were, and we did, but we found so many songs that we wanted to do. As a matter of fact, we cut 22 songs. So we've got a whole other album in the can. Yeah, yeah you sure do. Uh, but, and I don't know what'll happen to that. But we got, we all sat down together. We went to Dolly's office. We all sat down together and said, okay, you tell me what songs you want to do. And you tell me, and you tell me, you know. So we went around the three of us. We had 45 songs. I said, what are we gonna do? How do we cut this down to 10 songs? Or 12, you know, to have a couple extra. Well, we cut it down to 22 songs and we just decided, hey, we're gonna do them. And we had so many old favorites. Yeah. Like, I Forgot More Than You'll Ever Know, Skeeter Davis. Yeah, great song. When I Stopped Dreaming, The Leuven Brothers. So many of, of, of the old things. Hillbilly Heaven. Boy, this will be a great album. I, I can't wait for it to come Well, you know, out. you can put more than 12 on these CDs now. They can put how many? Well, 20 songs or so. Uh, we talked about uh, doing a double album, yeah. you know, but I, I don't know what uh, Sony will do. Um, I'll leave it up to them. No, I we'll really look. don't care, but I just know it has been so much fun. And uh, Loretta, <laughs> uh, Dolly and I both have just sat and laughed at her. She comes up with one-liners about oh, every yeah. two minutes, yeah. you know. And uh, she sat and looked at me one day, and she said, you know, a married man's nothing but a wolf with his ears pinned down. <laughs> and <laughs> I was about to go crazy. Just out of the blue. And, yeah, and Dolly and I just died laughing. And then she said, she came by, and she punched Dolly, and she said, uh, give a man a free hand, he'll put it all over you. <laughs> well, we were just roaring. Dolly said, that's a great line, Loretta said, I've already written it, already written it. And Dolly said, okay, okay, okay. You know, so we had so much fun. Some doing great that. song titles there. Let me take a break. Tammy Wynette is our guest. We'll be back with lots more to talk about. I've read somewhere where you picture yourself as an average woman rather than a star. Um, how do you really feel about yourself? I, I really feel that I am an average woman. I have a different job, and that's, that's all. Because I, I feel when I'm on stage singing, I have been what so many of the people are, women in that audience. I've worked in shoe factories, I've been a waitress, I've been a barmaid, I've worked in garment factories. I have done so many things. I've worked in the fields, picking cotton, baling <laughs> hay, pulling corn. And I feel that I can relate to the everyday things, the crises that they go through, the, the everyday changes and, and happenings in their life that happen to, me. to them. I know because I've, I've been there, so I don't feel any different from them. I can really associate with the, with the average woman. I just have a different job. I know that, uh, you know, in considering yourself as an average working girl or career girl, you have a lot more control over your career than most women. And uh, I think you'd agree to that, right? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I think I've been really lucky, uh, the 18 years that I've been in the business, to have had as much control as I've had over my career. I've done the things I've wanted to do on stage. I've, I've, maybe they haven't been the right things, but they've been the things that have been important to me and the things that, that I wanted to do. And I've, I have not in any way ever uh, felt less than anybody male, female, anybody on stage. I've always felt wonderful and feel you know, good to be doing what I'm doing and just happy because I'm thrilled to death that I finally, my dream came true. New look, new show, new hairstyle. Where does Tammy Wynette go from here? Uh, well, I hope to do uh, more television and uh, perhaps uh, some acting this year, which is something that I never wanted to do before. I, I've always said, no, I, I just don't want to do that because I'd be a total phony, and I know I would. I feel the same way about me. Well, it, you know, when I, <laughs> when I tried it, though, it was, it was great. The, the little bit that I did, I felt good, I really enjoyed it, and it wasn't nearly as, as hard as what I thought it was. It was different, and it was hard, yes. I'm not saying it, was, it wasn't complicated because it is, and it's a hard life. And I'm not saying I could ever be great at it, but I would like to, to try more. I would like to do something a little bit different, you know, and just do more things than what I'm doing. I want to always 
sing. I don't want to quit until I'm older than Aco. Please a don't. Few more, a few more years to go yet. But I do want to do some different things just to change up my life a little bit. Tammy, you seem to be happier now than you've ever been. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely happier now than I've ever been. Why? Uh, I'm content. I have a wonderful husband. My family's great. Uh, my kids just told me recently that uh, they had always been fully behind me in my music, and they, they said things to me that I'd never asked the kids and never had often wondered how they felt, you know, about the mistakes and things I'd made, how it affected them. And, uh, my career is, is, is wonderful. I'm, I have great management. Uh, I feel good. I'm just really happy. Probably won't write any sad songs, but I'm happy. <laughs> Sounds like you got the right attitude. Tammy, where do your eyes, tell me, uh, these are all statements that we can use, where the ideas come from from really great songs. Well, I get ideas from a lot of different places. I've gotten ideas from uh, reading books of poems uh, out of a magazine, uh, reading a story, billboards. And most of my ideas, though, that I have written about have come from real life experiences or something that I've gone through that I have really had to suffer through and I feel like I can write it better because I've been there. What happens when you see that phrase on the billboard or that um, phrase in a book or you hear somebody say something in conversation? What happens in your mind? Uh, well, I know Christmas of this past year, there was a, a line said during the Christmas party that, that uh, sparked in my mind a, a new mem band member was being introduced and he just said too new to mention and I thought oh my gosh what a great song idea you know I can write a love story love song about someone that's just come into your life but right now he's too new to mention you know it's, it, it just sets off something that starts your mind thinking about how to write it. How do you know it's commercial? Well I don't know if I really do know it's commercial or not. Uh, I just write what I feel and, and put my thoughts down on paper. Many times I write what I can't talk about, something that I'm upset about or hurt about and I put down on paper and pretend it happened to somebody else. But uh, I really don't know if it's commercial or not. Uh, that I, I just don't know. When you are played a song, when George brings you a song, uh, and, and says, you know, I think this is right for you and so forth. And you listen to that song. Once in a while you get that, that feeling, I'm sure, that, oh, I've just got to record this, you know. What is it about a certain song that makes it stand out for you from all the rest? Well, I like a pretty melody, uh, and I like a lyric, even if it's been written before, if it's said differently from what it has been written before. Uh, a catchy title will, will get me. I just recorded one called You Can Lead a Heart to Love But You Can't Make It Fall and I've always heard the old saying, you know, lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink. And uh, I guess a melody and just lyrics that, that uh, have something to do with, with how I feel about things uh, really make a difference to me. What makes a great song? We were discussing a while ago the marriage. Uh, they, they often say a, a great song is a marriage, a proper marriage between lyric and uh, melody. Well, I think what makes a great song is the appeal to a lot of different people. If you don't aim it in one direction, just to one to a male or to a female. I mean, a lot of songs are directed to males and to females, but uh, bring up one that that I was co-writer on, "Stand by Your Man." We that was directed at the women stand by your men but the men liked it also because it said you know stand by me so I think it, it's something that appealed to to everybody not just one person not just the women and not just the men. You told me a little story just a minute ago about having written a, a melody that's in a song. Can you tell that again? I wrote a song one time that I thought was a wonderful song and I had had a melody in my mind for a long time, but after I got to thinking about the song, I realized I had used somebody else's melody, and I tried to put another melody to it, and it just would not work. It was not the same song at all, so I, I just threw it away. There was just nothing I could do with it.
Today's befitting. It's kind of a down day. Everybody's feeling pretty bummed out. God bless Tammy Wynette. I'll see y'all. Thank you. When I talk to George Ritchie, Tammy's wonderful husband, they always talk about Tammy and her wonderful song of Standing By Your Man. Well, not many people say enough about George Ritchie and Standing By His Woman. When he said, I think... I love you all. Wait. time of entertainment, but may it be a spiritual high water mark. We had three queens in country music, and one of them's gone. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder. Consider all 